This is part two of my video on unusual dinner guests. And what I'm going to cover here is Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, which says, uh, which Jesus said, I did not come here to bring peace but a sword. What does a sword do? It divides. It's that simple. It divides Christians from Buddhists and, and Wiccans and Satan worshippers and, and uh, um, monks and that kind of thing. Why? Because our religion is a distinct religion. It's just like the Jewish religion. Now that does not mean we can't be friends with these people. It's just we're not going to participate in their theology because ours is distinct. It's that simple. And I know that other religions don't like that, but unfortunately that's too bad. We have our own religion and we're going to stick by it. And if it upsets them, we're sorry. Anyway, it also separates us from all polygamists. Why does it separate us from polygamists? Because these polygamists are performing an activity which could spread a communicable disease throughout the entire human race. Why would we want to associate ourselves with people that could literally destroy the entire human race with a communicable disease? We wouldn't. So it separates us from, from polygamists. Now what about the homosexuals, the bisexuals, you know, the LBGT community? Well, we may be their friend, but we're not going to stand there and participate in their gay pride parades and we're not going to endorse their lifestyle. We might tolerate their lifestyle, but we're certainly not going to endorse it. Big difference. I personally have no problem with a homosexual or a transsexual or anybody like that opening up a forum on homosexuality or transsexuality or whatever you want to call it. Okay? Um, I have no problem with an open forum and if they want to be on a street corner presenting their materials, explaining their way of life, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But when I see somebody participating in these alternative lifestyles and they make this humongous float and they make a spectacle of themselves demanding that we endorse their lifestyle, then I start having a problem. Do we Christians make these humongous floats and go out and make a spectacle of ourselves demanding that people endorse us? No. And we shouldn't. If, if you find people doing that, we really shouldn't. Well, the same deal with them. It's one thing to pre present an agenda. It's another thing to demand us to accept that agenda big difference. No arrogance will ever be allowed in the kingdom of heaven. And let me tell you something, if anybody, whether they be Christian or non-Christian, it doesn't matter. If you make a spectacle of yourself, God will put you flat on your face. Herod found this out when, he, when his stomach was eaten out by a can of worms. Same deal with us. Okay? It also puts a sore between Christians and child haters. Jesus never hated children. Why should we? And if we are um, standing there talking to a child hater, well, we shouldn't be. What do we have to do with them? For those people that are standing there working 16 hours a week deliberately not having children, and then on top of that telling people that children are an inconvenience, what do we have with them? They're not full of love. They're full of hate. We, we're not here to, to befriend and, and care for haters. That's not our job. We're not going to beat them up. We're not going to pummel them. But on the other hand, I'm not going to sit down at a dinner table with somebody that hates children. What would I have to do with them? Also, bullies. I'm no friend to a bully. Bullies are bad. And it doesn't matter whether they're bullying Christians or they're bullying transsexuals or homosexuals or anybody else. If you're a bully, you're going to hell. Let me tell you something. It's not necessarily your behavior that sends you to hell. It's your arrogance that sends you to hell. And that's something that these bullies need to keep in mind. Gluttons are also going to hell. When you become a literal hog, you will be treated like a hog. And if God gives you hell on earth and that doesn't stop you from being a glutton, he's going to send you to a real hell. And you will stop being a glutton. One way or the other, you're going to stop. And liars and thieves will also find their places in hell. 
Who wants to hang out with a thief? Who wants to hang out with somebody you, who you can't trust? Or somebody that lies to you on a regular basis? Who wants to hang out with them? That's wrong. All right. The final people that are going to be knocked into hell are people that just slaughter people with their mouths. If you on a perpetual basis are slaughtering people with your mouth, God's going to have a reckoning day with you. And eventually, you're going to go to hell. All right? You, you don't have the right to tear somebody down on a regular basis when it isn't necessary. It's just that simple. People do this. Even Christians do this. And, and, and these supposed Christians, and I want to say they're supposed because real Christians would never do this, but supposed Christians just tear people down right and left. They don't even think about it. Their conscience isn't even burned by it. It's wrong. If you keep it up, God will set you to hell for it. All right. I may cover this topic a little deeper in depth at a later time, but I think I've pretty much gotten my point across. And I will tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.